Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Git component. And pretty much what that does is it lets you gain access to a different script or other components other than the script you're using right now. Um, yeah, so let's start with uh, two cubes. And then we need to make two scripts. I'm going to call this get info for information, get information. And I'm going to make a script called um, set information. So go ahead and drag each of these scripts onto individual objects info and get info all right so let's open up the set info this is your setter and we're going to make a boolean and a int we're going to make them public so you can see it in the inspector in case we need it public int my value in a public bool is true. All right, and the start function Uh, we don't need to use the start function, do we? No, we don't need to use it. Okay. So that's pretty much all you have to do in this script. The other script, we're going to modify these two things. So let's open up the other script. Get info. Right, you're going to type private and we're going to type the set info the, the name of the script that you're trying to get stuff out of that, that is this right here is the script okay and then you need a reference usually you want to do the uh, reference kind of close to the script names. So I'm just going to do it backwards and say info script. And then end it with the semicolon. All right, you're going to type in a await function. And what await does, if you don't know, is it loads up everything before the game starts. So we're going to type in info script, which is your reference, equals game object, because you're looking for a game object, dot find, open your parentheses type the name of the game object that you are trying to find which is cube2 it also means what game object has that script attached to it so set info is attached onto what game object it's attached to cube2 all right then you type dot get component all that means is you're getting something out of something else. You're getting the components or you're getting the script. Set info. And in the lesser and greater error signs, you type in the script name again, which is set info. End it with a open and close parentheses and semicolon. 
So I'm just going to type a comment. This will allow access or modification to the set info.cs script. Okay, since now we did that, you can go to the start function, I guess. Let's just make it simple. And we will change the boolean to true because de by default it is false. All right, so you type in your reference, which is info script, the dot. And now you can use the variables and all the other stuff that's in set info script. So info script dot and choose the two variable names. My value and is true. So info script dot my value, see my value pops up equals five. And change the boolean. You just do info scripts dot is true equals true. So we save this, and when we start to play the game, it's going to change my value to five and is true to true. And these values or variables are not in the script. This is the whole point of Git component because these variables are in this script. You're accessing or modifying values through a different script. All right, so cube two, let's make sure everything's good infos. Okay, all right, let's push play. Wait, wait, there's something wrong. Info script dot my value equals five. Info script dot is true. What is wrong with this? Type does not contain a definition for my value. What? Did we not save it? Oh, we didn't save it. Okay. All right, so now you'll see that my value is set to zero by default and is true is false. If this was true, it would be click. We have not started the game yet. So push play. Bam, my value is now five and it is true is true. That is how you use Git component. It's very nice to know, especially especially when we get into intermediate uh, game programming for Unity.